Hi everybody, my name is Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Kaden. I'm Jaden. We are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. And we thank you guys very, very much for hanging out with us. It is a first day. I don't know what day you guys will be watching this, but uh, it is the day after the Shabbat. Most people are heading into a 501c3 church to hear what some pagan teacher has to teach them and uh, teach them things that aren't actually in scriptures. And so hopefully you guys are not one of those people heading into one of those <clears throat> those guys giving you guys the leaven of evil and teaching you guys not the commandments of our creator. We are the family that is what, gentlemen? Uh, I believe the law, statutes, and commandments are forever. The first five books about the Torah are our guide, and they are supposed to be supposed to follow them to be part of Yisrael, the Yahuwah's children. Who's our Messiah? Who came and done it, Eli? He is the son of our creator. His name is Yehoshua because there were no J's in Hebrew. Many people know him as Jesus Christ, but his name is Yehoshua, and he is the son of the creator. He's the son of Yahuwah. Okay, and what does salvation look like when you read scriptures from Genesis to Revelation? What is the what is the bottom line? How would somebody be saved? Salvation contains two things. Salvation contains believing that a Messiah, Yehoshua, came down to save our sins, that he was our savior, and then keeping the Torah, keeping the first five books of the Bible. Yeah, and you can you can follow that up with Revelation 14, 12, and that is exactly what they say salvation is, those who keep the commandments of our creator and the faith of Messiah, Yahushua. Now, we're sorry for the outside distractions. We have nine alligators with teeth. They always make noise and do funny things and make sounds. Nothing we could do. Um, commonly called pit bulls, and we love them a lot. They're our, they're our family. All right. What's that? What did I say? Nine alligators with teeth. Oh, nine alligators with teeth. Nine, yeah, nine alligators with fur. That's the right. That's the right way to do it. Thanks, Mystical. All right. So here we go. We are into the book of Hosea, and um, one of the furry alligators just came flying in here, making noise. One of the things that we're looking at is we are in the book of Hosea, and we are learning about the captivity that all of us are into right now. And I, still there will be that one guy that will argue that says we are abs we're not in captivity, no one's in captivity. And I will I will lead them to the point. Let me see if I can get my dog to stop doing it. I will lead them to the point to where we have them discover what their uh, driver's license looks like, what your social security card looks like, what your birth certificate looks like. We are all in captivity. We've all been dispersed throughout the northern tribes of Yisrael. We are in the end days and we are we are in a world and we are in a time when we don't have a tremendous amount of time left if scriptures is correct. If scriptures is correct, we have a 6,000 year time limit. We have a thousand year reign and we are at the edge of it. Now we could be a hundred years off. It could be next hundred years. It could be whatever. But here is the bottom line. The scriptures tells us we need to be wise. Then we have parables of wise virgins and foolish virgins and the wise ones were the ones who were ready, the ones who would put oil into their lamps. They have their lamps trimmed. They were ready for the bride that is coming. Now, we have been divorced by Yahuwah <clears throat> because he went and divorced the whole northern tribe of Yisrael. There's only been one tribe of Yisrael, Yah's people, that have returned. Now, the problem with him divorcing us is that we cannot be remarried to him in a Torah world. That is something really funny, something really a lot of people don't actually bring up or talk about. But according to Torah, if you are divorced, legally divorced, you cannot take your wife back. If you write her a letter of divorcement, she's gone. She's free to marry somebody else. Um, if you put her away, that is something else. She cannot go and um, find another man if you have not written her a letter of divorcement. In the scriptures, Yahuwah actually divorces the 10 tribes of, of northern kingdom of Israel, and he... He gets rid of them. He lets them go be destroyed. And so these are the stories that we are talking about right now. And as we are reading through them, they apply to us today because the same covenant that applied to them back in this day is the same covenant that we have been told about for right now. If you will obey my laws, statutes, and commands, I will be your Elohim and you will be my people. That has never, ever changed. Now, there's a difference between salvation with Messiah Yahushua and the kingdom road, but they all blend together and you need both roads to make this happen. Now, one thing I want to look at before we start reading is back to our kings right here. These were the northern kings of Yisrael, and these kings right here, they were all, they were all wicked. 
every single one of them. And it came, it started this other timeline right here. This is where the timeline started from. We have King David, then we have Saul. First we had Saul, then we had David, then we had Solomon. And after Solomon, that list of kings that we just saw are reigning all through these times right here. Now, Hosea is one of our last prophets right here that we're going to go through. And again, we're trying to get people to understand that the captivity that you guys are into today, it's simple enough to be out of it in a, in a kind of a virtual way. When we start obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, when we start obeying the, the will of our creator and doing what he wants us to do, that puts us on this kingdom road that is, is the line out of captivity. When we are freed, when somebody comes and frees us, when the second exodus comes, that is the people who will be taken are the people who are the law keepers, the people who are observing the law, statutes, and commandments, who are loving the laws of our creator. And it, it is hard to say that you love your Elohim, your God, with all your heart, mind, and soul, if you will not obey his laws, statutes, and commandments. It's just, it's, it's an oxymoron. It's just really not possible. And so, all right, so let's get into the reading today. And we are in Hosea 5. And so we are reading out of Yah's scriptures. If you guys would like a free copy of this, it is in the description below. Um, it is a very, very good read. Probably the very best translation anywhere out there. And it's absolutely free. We give you guys links to the PDF. And you guys can get download it, enjoy it, send it around to your friends, all that jive. Okay, gentlemen, are you ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. Hear this. O Kohenim, and listen, O house of Yisrael, give ear, O house of the sovereign, for the judgment is for you, for you have been a snare to mitzvah and a net spread on Tavor. Okay, now this is when we're, we're trying to figure out what a chapter says. Who is this to? What is this about? It clearly says, it's talking about the Kohenim. Now, who the Kohenim? What does that mean? They're the priests. And yeah. uh, back in the day, the priests of Israel, they went astray and led the people astray. They started doing sacrifices to other Elohim, other idols, and led the people astray. Yeah, and so when we are being addressed in this chapter 5, it's talking to the, to the Kohenim, the priests. It's talking to the house of Israel, And anytime it's talking about Israel or Ephraim, um, it's talking about the northern tribes. And so this is a warning for the northern tribes. And so let's continue on too. And they have made the made deep the pit of Chittim. So I reprove them all. I have known Ephraim and Yisrael has not been hidden from me. For now, O Ephraim, you have whored. Yisrael is defiled. Their deeds do not allow them to turn back to their Elohim. For the spirit of whorings is among them and they do not know Yahuwah. And the excellency of Yisrael shall witness to his face. And Yisrael and Ephraim stumble in their wickedness. Yahuda shall also stumble with them. With their flocks and herds they shall seek Yahuwah, but do not find him. He has withdrawn from them. And these are scary words, right? When the creator of the universe has withdrawn from you, when, it's, when you, good luck with that, have a, have a good one. He's, it's, it's very, very scary. What we want as people of Yah is we want his protection. We want to be in his palm. We want to be under his guidance. We're not going to be under his guidance and under his protection unless we are keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments, and we are loyal to him. When we are loyal to him, he will continue to be that covenant piece to us where he is completely loyal to us, but it's a two-way street. They have acted, seven, they have acted treacherously against Yahuwah, for they have brought forth strange children. Now a new moon shall devour them with their portions. Blow the ram's horn in Gibah, the trumpet in Ramah. Shout, O Beth Awan. Behind you, O Binyamin. Ephraim is laid waste in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel, I shall make known what is certain. The chiefs of Yahuda shall be like those who remove a border. On them I pour out my wrath like water. Ephraim is, is oppressed, crushed in judgment, because he walked after the command when it pleased him. Okay? And again, how did they get to the state they are in? By disobeying the Torah, worshiping other idols, doing all the sins, anything that is against the Torah. Yeah, and like it says in 11, because they walked after the command when it pleased them. So basically, they were not keeping Torah at all. They were not keeping any kind of laws, statutes, and commands. 
And, you know, it does remind me of this crazy AKA Watchman guy on YouTube. And he sits there and tells everybody not to keep the appointed times, not to keep the Shabbat, not to keep the Torah. And this is the same thing. He has the same mindset as all of these people that ended up in captivity. Do what you want. Do whatever. It's not a big deal. It, it doesn't matter. The laws of Yah, it just doesn't matter. Let's continue on. Ephraim is oppressed, crushed in judgment because he walked after the command when it pleased him. So I am to Ephraim like a moth and to the house of Yahuda like rottenness. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Yahuda saw his wound, then Ephraim went to Ashur and sent to sovereign Yerub, but he is unable to heal you or to remove the wound from you. For I am like a lion to Ephraim and a, like a lung, young lion to the house of Yahuda. I myself tear them and go. I take them away and there is no one to deliver. I shall go. I shall seek my place until they confess their guilt and seek my face in their distress. Diligently search for me. How would you, what does it look like if you diligently search for our creator? Well, you would be reading the Torah, you'd be obeying the Torah, your daily walk would be talking to him. Would you him. be eating bacon? You wouldn't be breaking Torah. No, you wouldn't be doing those kind of things. Would you be eating lobster, unclean food, worshiping on the wrong day? Uh, all of no, that. You, you would not be breaking the Torah. If you were searching after who, you'd be obeying the Torah, you'd be talking to him, you'd be living your days, you'd be following his appointed times, you'd do as he wanted you to do. You wouldn't be doing as you wanted to do. Yep. Okay, and I want to touch one last final thing on this is in 13, it says, uh, when Ephraim saw his wickedness and Yahuda saw his wound, and Ephraim went to Asher and sent to Sovereign Yerub. And I was trying to figure out exactly who Sovereign Yerub was. And I think it's I think it's the very first king that the or the one of the end kings. And so let me look who I believe they are talking about. I think they're talking about Jeroboam right here. Jeroboam the second, or is it uh, yeah. So it would be Jeroboam the second, I think, is the one. Because right here during the days of Hosea, it said they're calling to Jerob. So I think that was a nickname for him because he reigned 41 years. Most out of all of these ones towards the bottom in the days of Hosea. So <clears throat> bottom line, gentlemen, is what? Do we do we want to keep the law, statutes, and commands of our creator? Uh, it seems like a good thing. It seems like uh, if you don't, bad things happen. Is there any reason not to keep the laws of our creator? No, I see no reason not to. I mean, even if you have some kind of mindset like, oh, I shouldn't keep it, you know. It's like, but there's still good for you, and even if there's a slight chance you're wrong, you still keep them. Well, yeah, and I mean, if you if you don't like the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, then by default, you can grab that chunk of roadkill alongside the road, the thing that's been dead for about four and a half days, and you can go strip the rest of the hair off of it and cut it up a little bit and stick it on the on the stove, right? Because we are told not to eat the dead, things that are torn of itself. There's an entire set of guidelines that you will have and you will find. And if you are bypassing our creator in his ways, then you're bypassing uh, the guide to life and you'll be eating things that will be disgusting. Your soul will be in a bad place and your heart will be in a bad place and you won't know how to act and love your neighbor as we are told to do. So with that, everybody, we thank you guys very, very much. We hope that you guys have a wonderful week and we are out. All right, shalom. shalom.